Tropical Storm Karen forms in the Atlantic. More tropical development likely into the end of September. Since the peak of Atlantic hurricane season, which occurred on September 10th, there has been no shortage of Atlantic tropical threats during the last full week of summer. The most menacing of those storms was Emilda, a storm that brewed quickly in the western Gulf of Mexico on Tuesday before moving inland over Texas and unleashing deadly flooding. As of now, there's been three confirmed dead. Um, another manufactured storm comes out of nowhere and dumps feet of rain on the public that had no idea really that it was even going to be that strong or do the damage that it did when most are still recuperating from Harvey. Meteorologists were also monitoring Humberto which strengthened into a major hurricane in the western Atlantic and delivered fierce winds in Bermuda last week. The powerful hurricane stayed well east of the United States but threatened dangerous surf along the coastlines. Yeah, we were really worried about Bermuda getting hit with that and they did but not as bad as it could have been so praise God on that one. Not far behind Umberto, Jerry brewed over the open waters of the Atlantic and rapidly strengthened into a hurricane by Thursday before skirting northeast of the Leeward Islands on Friday. Alright, I want to say something. How many times are we going to hear this exact thing? Rapidly strengthened into a hurricane. How many times are we getting this rapid intensification? It, it happens every single time now. You go to bed and it's a tropical storm, you wake up, it's a Cat 3. Or you go to bed, it's a Cat 1, you wake up and it's a Cat 5 like it was in the Bahamas. When they're not projecting it to be anywhere near there. Behind Jerry, Tropical Storm Karen formed on the Sunday morning just east of the Windward Islands. A tropical storm warning has been issued for Trinidad and Tobago and Grenada and its dependencies according to the National Hurricane Center. AccuWeather had been monitoring this area of disturbed weather for tropical development since last week, since late last week. And there's a satellite image of it. Which we never know if that's what it looks like or not, because obviously we know they can just show us any pretty picture and they go with it. All right, Karen will bring locally heavy rainfall and wind gusts to 40 to 50 mile per hour later today to Granada, Trinidad and Tobago and St. Vincent and the, the Grenadines. AccuWeather senior meteorologist Said, sporadic power outages across these islands are likely later Sunday into Sunday night. After crossing the Windward Islands, Karen is expected to turn northward over the Eastern Caribbean Monday into Tuesday. Look at this. They say some strengthening. You guys notice something here? Remember Dorian? Dorian literally started right here. Came up here. They thought it was going to go in between Puerto Rico and Cuba. And it didn't. It ended up shooting the gap this way. It went right exactly where they're telling you this one's going to go. And once again, they have no real idea of what it's going to do. Some strengthening, just so vague. So now you can pretty much put three storms. We've had Dorian, Umberto, and now Karen that have pretty much formed in the same areas and had a lot of the same characteristics. We'll come to see if this one comes up and makes that left-hand turn just like Dorian did. Karen will gradually intensify as it tracks towards Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands early this week. An up uptick in downpours and locally gusty winds is likely along Karen's path. Beyond Tuesday, Karen will continue to move northward and will be centered well of the east of the Bahamas by later this week. But look at this part at the end. <laughs> he adds that it is possible that Karen turns westward by next weekend. So yes, this is one we need to definitely keep an eye on, because if this makes its turn to the west, we know right where it's headed.
All interest in the Bahamas and southeastern United States should continue to monitor Karen's track. Yeah, you think? Meanwhile, a potent tropical disturbance with a batch of heavy showers and thunderstorms will move off the coast of Africa on Sunday. Meteorologists are closely monitoring this disturbance for development into a tropical depression or storm this week. Because this feature is so far on the edge of the basement, basin, movement and impact, if any on the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean in general from one to two weeks away is highly uncertain. That seems to be their answer for almost everything. Highly uncertain. And now their new term, the Cone of Uncertainty. Because that's what they use every time now because they don't know which way the hurricane is going to go. There is a chance this feature is steered northward over the middle of the Atlantic, perhaps before approaching the Lesser Antilles. While the overall weather pattern will be conductive to spawning long track Cabo Verde systems, which from which form off the coast of Africa and turning them away from the Atlantic coast of the United States, there is some risk of additional systems forming over the Gulf of Mexico into early October. Remember Michael? Seems like they're kind of prepping us for a very bad hurricane in October. Anytime there is a general area of high pressure that lingers from the western Atlantic to the south central United States, the clockwise flow around this system can generate a broad area of counterclockwise flow, what meteorologists refer to as gyre, near Central America see what they use this they say that this high pressure is what's steering it when we know that they're manipulating these high pressures I mean look at they're actually telling you what these winds are gonna be late September to early October you know they're trying look at steering winds you know they, they pretty much tell it to you just they just, just lie to you about how they're steering it but they're you know talking about steering it every day Weak to moderate tropical, tropical systems can form in the western Caribbean or southern and western Gulf of Mexico. These systems could brew with close proximity to land, similar to how Imelda formed near Texas, and thus could form with little lead time before striking. I want you guys to listen to that. That is extremely important. They are telling you that you are going to, it's very good chance that they will form very close to land, similar to how Imelda formed near Texas, and thus could form with little lead time before striking. So they're trying to explain to you and tell you ahead of time that most likely we're going to get some storms here in October that are going to be where you are absolutely not aware. Imelda was literally nothing but some thunderstorms, and once again, somehow, it turns into dumping feet of rain. And once again, the thing stalls out. As we saw with Imelda, a powerful hurricane is not needed to cause great risk to lives and considerable property damage and disruptions due to flooding. Once again, reassuring you that it doesn't have to be a named storm for them to come in and take away your entire livelihood by flooding you out or storm surge or whatever whatever it could be this time of the year residents travelers shipping and cruise interests should closely monitor the tropics as conditions can change significantly from one day to the next can you talk about them giving you any more uncertainty giving you any more of a completely <laughs> that statement is just horrible this time they all these people should be you know, monitoring these conditions? Do you not think that they do that on a daily basis anyways? Here's their chart for hur hurricane frequencies June to November. Sharpest increase. And I like this date. August 20th to what? September 11th. Had to throw that date in there. And as they're showing you that this peak right here in the middle of October is really what we need to watch out for. The Atlantic hurricane season goes through the end of November. 
They're gonna continue to say that so that they can continue to manipulate these storms and torment people even longer, making people wait all the way until December to finally get some relief from the stress and anxiety of these storms coming in.